I've done this kind of video for uh, number theory by now and uh, real analysis and this is the one where I talk about uh, how, what are the four and I guess I've got it down to four every single time what are the four books that I uh, I think would work well for somebody who's self-teaching or trying to do well in a university course with either one of these books or other books uh, for complex analysis and so the four books are Alphers, Saf and Snyder, um, Churchill and Brown, and then uh, Nahari. Now, Nahari is the one of the four that uh, may have a better book out there, but I haven't found it. I think for conformal mapping uh, and just going through uh, some, some harmonic analysis at a basic level, I think this is the, the book, in my opinion, based on what I've seen. Uh, so yeah, definitely in my case, I read uh, all of Saf and Snyder. Uh, the book, of course, is perfectly edited. I don't believe that I found any typos, maybe like one silly one somewhere. Uh, and then also it's got a lot of examples, a lot of proofs. So it's actually got the best of both worlds. Uh, my criticism, which I've laid out in other videos that I have made, is that Saf and Snyder could have tied together the all the different parts of harmonic analysis uh, that are in this book about harmonic functions, harmonic functions, and the Laplacian, he, he, they could have tied it together at like a chapter 10, you know, at the very end of the book, or maybe a chapter uh, after conformal mapping, but before transforms. That would have really helped. And I think in my case, I had to use Nahari, I've had to, uh, to kind of, okay, this is what they really meant, and to put it all together. Just a little more would have made this book perfect, and I'm, I, I don't even think I would have gone for it in a hurry if that had been the case. So yeah, and as I've mentioned before in, the, in videos, um, these books, these actually all four books follow a very similar pattern. Talk about complex numbers, uh, talk about analytic functions, then the elementary functions, uh, especially the whole thing about branch cuts and, and branch points. Very interesting, very difficult, I found. Um, complex integration, uh, series, residues, conformal mapping, and then in the case of Saf and Snyder, he does transforms. So yeah, the book is excellent. I, I highly recommend it for a beginner, somebody who's never done any complex analysis. I had done a little bit uh, way back when in engineering, but I hadn't really done 95% of this book. I've done a little bit of uh, Laplace transforms and that was it. Uh, Alphers is sort of like the baby rudin of analysis, but I believe it's actually better uh, because I, it, it is really well written, really approachable, and I continue to find to this day, every time that I look for a concept that I consider advanced and interesting, it is in here. It just is, always. I was even looking at subharmonic functions. <laughs> And it's somewhere back here. Just, just as a test, I'm going to do it right here. So subharmonic functions, 245. Um, let me see. Page 245. And it's a, the, the Dirichlet problem. All right. And then he goes into subharmonic functions. So yeah, Alphers is really the, the hardest of the four, in my opinion, and the best also. But I just wasn't ready for it. I, 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 I do self-learning, so I'm, I'm very limited. And I'm, I, need, I need answers, for instance, and I need to be treated like a baby. I'm sorry, but that's where I am in my hobby, which is all this is for me. In your case, it may be you're a major, you're a math major. That's, then you got to be a little more hardcore, but you also have faculty people who can help you and TAs and other uh, colleagues who are also studying math. So you have resources that I don't have. Uh, but this... And if that was the case, actually, I think Alphers is the one to go for. Just go for the best and just get everything really well done. Uh, yes, there is a point that I would love someday uh, to read the whole book. One thing that the book does, <clears throat> does that Saf and Snyder does not do, is it, it, it hits you with bilinear transformations, otherwise known as, as, uh, as uh, Mobius transformations, otherwise known as, as conformal mappings. And really, uh, in, in my case, when I read Saf and Snyder, <clears throat> I had to figure out near the end, chapter seven, conformal mapping, oh, this is what this whole thing is about. And this is why I went and I got me this book. 
I was like, well, if all you guys are talking about is conformal mapping, why don't I just go for the main thing and do a whole book on conformal mapping? And sure enough, that's what I'm doing right now. So another strongly recommended book for a beginner, I, I would say uh, if you did it the way that I did it, you would have a, an engineering-like complex analysis book, but then you would always have this in the, in the back, uh, you know, I'm, I'm saying as a backup, for any time you read something and you're like, uh, how much more is there to this? It's in here, okay? Then the, the great classic for engineering students, and, and maybe this is the one that, that you would do instead of Saf and Snyder. I felt Saf and Snyder had fewer applications, but more on the concepts. But boy, it's a hard call. I think, um, you know, both books are really fantastic. Churchill is a classic, has been used by trillions of people who have learned complex variables in engineering schools throughout the world. Uh, it is exquisitely written. Um, I don't, I mean, I doubt anybody could find a typo in this book, uh, even though it's gone through a, a gazillion editions. This is the eighth, and I know there are later ones. It's really Churchill's book. Churchill passed away. Brown took it over. And so I think the very early editions are all just a Churchill book. That's why I always get tripped up when I talk about this book. I always say Churchill and Brown instead of Brown and Churchill. But either way, uh, may he rest in peace. Churchill left behind a great complex variables book. Uh, and I also want to read this book completely. I definitely plan to do a bunch of problems in this cycle, even though I've already sort of moved on and that I'm, I want to do a lot of real analysis for the second time. But there, God willing, there is a second time for complex analysis too. And this book is right in the middle of it. I just made a video uh, about the maximum modulus principle. And this book far and away would have been the one that, as a baby, I would have read to understand it. Uh, and then Conformal Mapping uh, by Nahari uh, is the one that's a little, you know, the, the, the challenge book. Uh, the chapter, chapter one on Conformal Map on uh, Harmonic Analysis, Harmonic Functions, I found it was a little too hard. It could have been explained better. There may be a better Conformal Mapping book out there, uh, maybe something called Potential Theory. Uh, and in that case, this one may be a pass for, for many of you. But I really like the way things are explained. And I, I, I like taking my time and going through and just piecing it out. Sometimes, I mean, for example, I just did this on analytic continuation. And it, this took me hours just going through and breaking down every single aspect of what he's saying maybe looking up a few things, maybe sometimes I'll do a little chat GPT on it, but this right here, it's just, he explains really, really well. So I also think this is a good book, uh, yet I have not read the whole book, but it reminds me a lot of uh, Niven uh, for number theory, where it's just, it's just a higher level. And so that means that at times uh, you're gonna be like, wow, this is hard reading. And yeah, this, this book, <laughs> has given me at least one headache, uh, but no pain, no gain. Uh, so those are my four complex analysis books that I think are like recommended by me based on my experience. Uh, if you guys want to try it, any one of them, and uh, have a great day.